Hey y'all, so today we're gonna look at VFX Graph and specifically how to use flipbooks inside of VFX Graph and use an image sequence so that we can make something like a flame. We are gonna be doing all of this in Unity 6 and in URP, so the Universal Render Pipeline. So let's dive in. I already have Unity 6 pulled up. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is go into Window, Package Manager, go into the Unity Registry and search for the word Visual where you're gonna see visual effect graph. I'm gonna go ahead and start installing this. So with this installed in Pac-Man, you can go over into samples and import the learning templates if you wanna see all the cool learning templates that Unity has built for us. But I'm gonna go ahead and just create our own effect. Right click, create, and come down to visual effects and do a visual effects graph. From here, I don't really have an exact template that I want to use for this. So I'm just gonna jump in at the minimal system. So now that we've created our new VFX graph asset, I'm just gonna rename this to Candle Flame. And then the next thing that we need to do is find a sprite sheet. So I can do a separate video on how to create your own sprite sheet coming out of something like Blender where you're rendering fire from in there. Um, but for right now, I'm just gonna find a good sprite sheet online. So for this, there's actually a really cool resource online, and I'll put this in the description below. But Unity did release some free VFX image sequence flipbooks that you can get through. So I'm just going to slowly scroll down here until we find something that's close to what we want, which will be like a candle flame, some interesting smoke, clouds. I know they have explosions. I'm sure we'll see in a minute here. Yep, here we go. So some pretty good stuff here. And then if we keep moving forward, hopefully we'll find something that suits what we're wanting. I would say that's probably close enough. I will extract that. And once we have that extracted, then I should be able to come right into here and pull in my EXR. And it should come through just as a straight flipbook, and it does, great. This says it's a 16 by four, which will be important for us to remember later. All right, so if I come over here and go into UV mode for my render quad of the VFX graph that I'm making, I can change that over to a flipbook and make sure that it has 2D texture. We're not using an array. Um, we could maybe do flipbook blend frames, but for now, let's just go ahead and pull this texture into the main texture. We're gonna call that 16 by four. So now we have the render portion of this done. Now what we want to do is make sure that we add a flipbook block, flipbook player that is. And in here, it's actually really nice. It uh, takes care of a ton for you. So if you have a frame rate that you're sticking with and you have a uh, frame rate mode and constant as your frame rate, then at that point, all that we really need to do is do a, a burst spawn, a single burst. We're going to keep the spawn mode to constant and delay mode to constant and put it at a count of one. So now that we have that in here, let's go ahead and drag our candle flame over into the scene hierarchy. Hop over into the scene. And we can see our flipbook playing right here, which is pretty solid. All right, so we have everything working just as expected. We just wanna come into blend mode and change that over to additive. But right before we do that, let's go ahead and create a 3D object. And let's make this a cube. So this cube is coming quite large. Let me just move my candle flame forward. There are a few things that we can do at this point. One of them is that I would like to, after changing this over to additive, I would like to have the pivot move down and kind of have this thing move a little bit left and right as if it's flickering in the wind. So the first thing that I wanna do is a set pivot, which I need to do, as we've talked about previously, what each of these blocks do. If you need a refresher, I do have the intro course that I'll, I'll link to right here. But inside of initialize particle, we want to go ahead and create a block. Let's say set pivot. 
And now I want to take the pivot in the y direction and move it down. Let's just do negative one and see what that is. Definitely too much. Let's go negative 0.5. And that's exactly right. So now our pivot is right at the bottom. So what I can now do is over in the update particle, I can control the axis of rotation just slightly. So now I can come down and I can do a set angle and that'll be on the Z axis. And now this angle, we can pipe something into. And I actually saw something over in the samples when I was reviewing that video a few months back that I think I want to reuse here, um, which also had a cool idea in that there was a bit of variance in the color. There was some multiplication. So I'm also going to create a block for set color. And to create these blocks, you can either hit space or you can right click and hit create block. Either one works just fine. So coming out of here, we want to have something that's going to add some variance to the angle and the color. So I think what I'd like to do is start with something like a random float. And then let's say add that to uh, time maybe. So over lifetime here. And now what I want to happen is to have this come out into an add node. And then I want something like total time to come out into the B. And then from here, we want all of this to come out into a noise, um, which really we don't need much more than just a value 1D, so one dimensional noise. And then we can come over here and let's get this all a little bit more tidy, and pull it over. And let's have this noise then go into a multiply node that will then go out into the color and the angle so that we can control each one on its own. So there's a multiply float and then another multiply float. And let's have this one plug in down to the color and this one plug in to the angle. So now I can pull all of this back And you can see there's a lot happening here. So let's pull this back. Uh, I believe in the examples, the settings were something similar to this, where we went from zero to one. Instead of negative one to one, frequency was two, octaves were two, roughness 0.5, and lacunarity at two. So now that we have that and it's not inverting the color, <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and multiply these a bit. So let's try maybe 30. That's definitely too much. Let's try 10. Now it just looks like it's getting subtly pushed by wind coming from left to right. I think that looks kind of nice. And then we'll change the color to 25. So it looks a lot more hot, it looks more vibrant. It's probably a little bit too much, huh? I think that's looking pretty all right. I'm happy with that. And now we have some really basic movement and some animation built into it. So one last thing that I think I wanna do is just play around a bit with the random float that we have at the beginning here. So let's say we make this a lot bigger. Let's just go to negative 300 by 300 and let's make that seed whatever. So if we're looking at it right now, you can kind of see how it's looking. We wanna change out to just a random number and see what we like, if that changes anything. Actually, I like that a lot. I think let's go with it. And all of it gets fed back into this range of zero to one, which is always great. Cool. I think I feel really good about that. And if you click on it, you can see how the angle is being animated slightly as the particle system is running. Our flipbook is running. So just to recap, we imported that sprite sheet from the resource that I'll link in the description below. We indicated our flipbook size. We changed the blend mode to additive and made sure that UV mode was on flipbook to start. 
At the very top here, we made a single burst with a constant spawn mode with a count of one. Then we came down here and we set the pivot to a negative 0.5 to get it right at the bottom of the sprite. Then we updated the particle with that flipbook player node that does a ton of heavy lifting for us. We set the angle and the color based on some noise here that we've derived through float and total time being added, and then limiting that to zero to one, then multiplying each to set these individually. I hope this has been helpful for you and that you're as happy as I am with this particle effect. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. As always, have a great day. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.